Hey guys, it's Tina, and I want to talk to you today about an important thing within your Young Living team building, and that is called sponsor changes. This is a sensitive subject and requires some communication with your upline and with your new enrollees in every situation. Now, if you have been studying the compensation plan, then you may have realized that on your first level, you only need six legs to make it all the way to Royal Crown Diamond. Now, this means that as you're sharing your oils, you're going to probably be enrolling a whole lot more than six people. And so you need to learn what we call strategic placement. And that is the ability to put your new enrollments on teams to help build organizations under those six first level team leaders. Now, this requires a lot of thought and prayer and consideration because I like to put people together that are maybe in the same family or maybe in the same community or in the same profession. I like to group my people together and consider who's going to help lead one another. And this has been very good in helping me um, with helping others develop their teams. Now, with sponsor changes, there are some rules, and I want to talk to you about what those rules are. First of all, you can follow up with all of these rules on the policies and procedures, which is listed in the member resource section of youngliving.com. This is a 28-page document. I highly recommend that you read it, download it, share it with your teams. It should be in your file section on your Facebook team groups, and you should be talking from this policies and procedures document on a regular basis. Many of the rules that are broken at Young Living are covered right here in this policies and procedures. So when we know it, then we know what the rules are, and then we are less likely to break those rules. So the rules on sponsor changes, those can be found on page 23, section 12.1.1. I've also put those in a file on Tina's droppers for you to be able to see just that particular segment. Now, first of all, when you enroll somebody, you have a very easy uh, procedure for moving them within their first five days of enrollment. You can hop on the phone or on Live Help and call and inform Young Living that you want to make a sponsor change. You're going to need that member's member number and their PIN number as well as your own to make these changes and those sponsor changes will appear immediately or within the next few minutes on your downline viewer. Now if it's past five days but before 30 days then you need to make these requests request to be moved in writing. You can send your request via email to resolutions at youngliving.com. You can also send them by regular mail or by fax. That contact information is listed on the Young Living website. Now, when you make these requests, you need to let Young Living know the purpose of um, your request to move a sponsor. You also need all member numbers and PIN numbers from those that are making the move. Um, these changes can take up to 30 days to see um, it, them take place in your downline viewer. Um, within that 30 days, I've heard some questions about, well, can the new enroller, um, enrollee begin enrolling new people? Um, will they move with them? And the answer to that should be a yes. And so I would say continue to share your oils, have classes, and develop your Young Living business while you're waiting on your sponsor change. There's some other things you want to consider when you're changing sponsors, such as is the new person that you're putting this enrollee under as a sponsor on some kind of income um, restrictions, such as disability. Some people have government jobs and they're not allowed to receive any additional income, uh, maybe a political type job. So make sure that you communicate with the person you're about to strategically place other members under that they're okay with getting a paycheck from that team that you're building under them. That's pretty important. All right, if they do have restrictions, then just choose another team to build under and I'm sure you'll have plenty. All right, so the big sticky situations that come about are those that are making requests after 30 days. Now, Young Living definitely 
frowns upon moving people after 30 days and they make it difficult for you to do that. These rules are in place to protect you and your team as well as the other marketing teams within Young Living. It is very important that we know um, why we're making a move and we have to submit those requ requests in writing. There is a fee for making moves after 35 after 30 days and that fee is $35. That fee has to be paid whether your request is granted or not. Um, if you are moving someone or making a request to move someone who has a downline, another big risk is you may not be moving that person's downline along with them. Young Living clearly states that they have, um, they actually reserve the right to keep the downline of that person in the team that they were originally in. So is it worth the risk for what you're making this request? Um, a lot of times people are making requests to move after 30 days because they're wanting to rank up or they're wanting to structure their teams for a better commission. Young Living frowns on this and they may deny your request because of that. Um, if you have someone who's come to you and said, hey, I really want to be on your team. I just see you're doing so many things and my enrollers just not working the business and I feel so disconnected. Can I move to your team? This is something you need to stop right there and say, you know what, let me find who your upline is. I am sure there's a silver, gold, platinum, or diamond leader who is eager to help you develop your Young Living business. Meanwhile, I'll be happy to foster you as um, just my friend who is wanting to learn the business. This is the um, best way to handle that. If you encourage someone to make that move, then this is called poaching um, or stealing, and it's, it's against the rules. And you could stand losing your entire team and organization from Young Living for abusing this rule. It is not worth it. This is where cross-line team building is a beautiful thing. God has given each one of us gifts and talents and abilities, and some of us are weak in areas. Why don't you just decide to get together with some people, regardless of whose upline, downline, crossline they're in. If those people are your friends and they build you up and you feel good energy vibes when you're together and you guys brainstorm and come up with all kinds of ideas, then work together. It doesn't matter if you're not in the same legacy or lineage in your young living business. Still, you can work together. And it's really a beautiful thing. I have um, been blessed with some cross-line friends that I love. And I love the ideas and sharing of my own. And it's just a great thing. So um, just know the rules know what is against the rules. And when you're making a request to move someone, know the risks. Now, there are some um, other situations to where if a, a member has been inactive, then they can make a request. It has to come from the member, not from you or their enroller. Um, if they've been act inactive without placing any orders or generating any sales underneath them, within six months, then they can request to move an enroller and sponsor. Um, that still costs $35 and it still may not be granted. It may be rejected, which the $35 is not refundable. Um, and then another thing is when a member becomes inactive for 12 full consecutive months with no ordering and no sales generated in their team, um, by enrolling people, then they become inactive. Um, they can reactivate their membership after 13 months with any purchase. And at that point, they can move their sponsor and enroller with no fees attached and no questions asked. So there you go. There are some of the highlights in the, um, in the rules. Learn them. I um, encourage everyone, this document is as important as the terms and definitions. Policies and procedures, they change each year. We haven't seen the 2015 come out yet, so we're going by the 2014 until further notice. 
Um, so be uh, stay in tune to Tina's Droppers, and we will update you on any policy and procedure changes. If you have any questions on how this looks in your downline and in your strategic placement planning with your team, then reach out and let us know. We'll be happy to help answer your questions. Have a great day. Bye-bye.